bad some blocking protections, but yet getting our backs out after they chip and after they help block. And you know what? It, it just kind of put a little extra on, on me and the rest of the guys to, to learn the offense and learn something new and um, still just kind of run with it. Well, Mort, the adjustment there, eh? Yeah, no question about it. And really, put the playbook aside for a minute, a lot of the focus has been on the relationship uh, between Todd Haley and Ben Roth Roethlisberger and how that will work out because Roethlisberger was very close to Bruce Arians who was let go really by decision of management. And so here comes Haley, strong-willed, certainly strong uh, in every aspect. And you have one thing here. Todd Haley is a disciple of Bill Parcells. What did Bill Parcells say about celebrity quarterbacks? So Haley is a, likes blue-collar quarterbacks and he doesn't like divas. Ben is a blue-collar quarterback, but he's got a little bit of diva in him, even as he is maturing. So there could be some bumps in the road here, just as there were some bumps in the road with the Roethlisberger's first offensive coordinator, which was Ken, H Ken Wisenhunt. Boom. All right, Mort, thank you very much. Get back to looking through that paperwork over there because I, I, need, you, I need to bone up on a couple of things. <laughs> good idea to change things up at this stage. I mean, not like Ben is 40 years old. I mean, it change well, is good. You, in you the don't time. want to mess with success too much. At Super Bowl 43, Todd Haley had a front row seat for what Ben Roethlisberger does best, which is everything breaks down. I move out of the pocket. I got the greatest feet on a big man that's ever been seen, and I throw touchdowns and win Super Bowls. You don't want to mess with that too much. Yeah. There's a basic fundamental. If you're not getting better, you're getting worse. And Ben is at a point in his career where you need to listen to someone else. That's how you become a great player. You take coaching. It's the most underrated thing in the National Football League. It's not all about talent. You got to be able to submit that talent to a coach. That's how you become great. Drew Brees is getting better. Aaron Rodgers getting better. Mr. Brady, I know he's trying to get better. Why wouldn't Ben have the same criteria for him? Right, studying is a part of the game, Ben. You might want to wake up and realize that. I think their relationship's gonna be fine. I think Todd Haley's gonna teach Ben how to protect himself. Three step, five step drops, get the ball out quick, screens like he said, the backs out, all of those sorts of things. And that's a plus. All you gotta do is go to Arizona. Talk to Kurt Warner. If you, you don't have to listen to me. You can go talk to Kurt Warner and Larry Fitzgerald if you think there's gonna be relationship problems who Todd Haley is. Just go down there. Oh, there'll be no relationship problem. You guys are dreaming though. Ben Roethlisberger is not going to change. I don't. Yeah, the offense can go. change. The offense might change. Sure, probably he'll run the offense. It's called, but he's not going to change. So what ben makes Ben Roethlisberger successful is the way he plays the game, guys. I'm sorry. If you're changing the offense, coach. You're going to change him. Well, fit you know, into the first system. of all, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it ain't broke, don't. It fix is it. broke. He no, keeps it getting hurt, coach. That's the reason why they didn't make Super Bowl last year. Yeah. Maybe everyone yeah. can learn from everyone else. Pittsburgh yeah. is at Denver tonight. Thanks. Susie, we're going to learn from you guys now about another guy that this, this jet is grounded, isn't he? Yeah, well, if you want to talk about new offense, enter Tim Tebow and the Jets. His role under wraps in the preseason will finally be revealed about an hour from now. Already revealed during our extensive coverage of Jets training camp, his sculpted physique. And you may have noticed he packed on some weight for his new role, already tough to tackle. He was told after the trade with the Broncos to add 10 pounds. So 250 is the highest he's been, making his presence as a goal line threat all the more impressive, as detailed by our sports science team. Here's John Brinkus. In a shotgun formation, Tebow can accelerate to nearly 20 miles an hour and can get to the line of scrimmage off tackle in 1.9 seconds. That's about two tenths of a second quicker than the average running back taking a handoff, giving the defense about 11% less time to react. Tebow can cut laterally in as little as two tenths of a second. This agility and quickness enabled him to run the three cone drill faster than both Maurice Jones Drew and Darren Sproles. And he's much heavier than both of these running backs currently outweighing Sproles by about 60 pounds. And since Tebow has added about 10 pounds in the offseason, this means he can run into a defender with about 4% more force than last season, delivering hits on par with tackles we've measured by Dwight Freeman. Incredibly, as a pro in goal-to-go -go situations, out of 10 rushing attempts, Tim Tebow has scored a touchdown eight times. For ESPN Sports Science, I'm John Brinkus. Let's go to our IBM Insight Center. The Jets 
Really good in that goal to go. They scored a touchdown 80% of the time they were in goal to go down a distance, and that was tied with the Packers for the highest rate in the league. So, Jaws, it's sort of interesting to note here, of all the weaknesses that the Jets had, the things they needed to repair, the one area wasn't short yardage. <laughs> they were second in the NFL. But what do you think of the Tebow goal line package? Offensive football is all about dimensions. Can you throw the ball deep? Can you throw it short? Can you throw it to the sideline? Can you throw it in the hash here? Passing game. Running game, can you run inside? Can you run outside? Now you get in goal line situations. You add the dimension of Tim Tebow to this offense. Yes, they've been successful, but you now create another issue for the defense. And you're only as successful as your offensive line. So in your matchup <laughs> extra, Merrill, introduce us to that line. They've had a few issues in the preseason. I loved all the dimensions because all Thank of them you. are true. There's one thing, though, if you're going to do all those dimensions, you have to be able to block people, okay? <laughs> and the Jets block nobody in preseason. Here's an example of the running game and the passing game that was a history for them in their preseason game. This I formation is going to be a bend back. Very simple up front. You're going to get a double team. That double team, you two guys, you move all the way to the stack linebacker, get both guys blocked. Well, they don't even touch the stack linebacker. He is free to the backfield. Let's go to the fullback. He has got the other backside stack backer. Rule of thumb from the blocking perspective, never pass up another defender to block your guy because that guy will make the tackle. Uh-oh. Again, we have two guys unblocked. One came from the secondary, the other from the second level. This has also been a problem, pass protection. They're going to slide to the right. Today's game, that could be Mario Williams they're sliding to. Now we got an issue here. Linebackers in the A-gap. That means an automatic adjustment by the offensive line. They must slide down. That puts the back on the outside defensive end. One little wrinkle. This is where we call it the green dog, the linebacker left. He's still the offensive line's responsibility, but they lose sight of him because the back is blocking the defensive end. The linebacker recognizes he's blocking, so guess what? I'm going to blitz. That's where we get the green dog term. Go. Now he blitzes. And guess what? Another, the theme here, free defender at Mark Sanchez. And really, this isn't even a blitz per se. Yes, it's a green dog, and they bring the fifth guy, but he wasn't part of the rush. Only the initial scheme, the threat of the A-gap, the offensive line loses him, and there goes Sanchez. Down goes Sanchez. If this doesn't correct, I don't care what they run, what cat they bring out of the bag. It's not going to be effective. And all those dimensions you talked about are vital, but you must block to be effective with those dimensions. Blocking in the running game, pass protection in the pass game. Pretty simple when you get down to the basics of football. Yeah, I checked in with ESPNNewYork.com beat writer Rich Samini, who spends every day with the team. He said as soon as the schedule came out for the Jets and they saw they were going to face the Bills, they knew they would keep the whole Wildcat under wraps because no team will be as prepared for the Wildcat. Uh, quarterback coach David Lee of the Bills, he's the one who actually right. taught Tony Sperano the Wildcat. So, boom, huh. the Bills are ready for the Tim Cat and poised to handle the expectations coming off one of the most successful off-seasons in recent Bills history. It's created a lot of excitement. Now, can they deliver? Well, it's, it's very interesting since you bring up David Lee also with Sperano. The, the, the cat and mouse game, I guess. It, 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 this yeah. thing. Oh, by the way, the Bills are playing the Jets today. They are Look, they haven't made the playoffs since... We brought the original wagon out and started <laughs> circling it. Uh, they, are they a finally a factor this year, Tom, in the big picture? They started well last year, but then nothing. I believe they are because they answered a lot of questions offensively last year. Had, had a, some struggles down uh, the second half of the season. But defensively, if you're going to be great, you're going to be great up front. And I think that they made the effort getting Mario Williams, Mark Anderson, Kyle Williams, Darius was already in place. When you have that kind of unit up front, you can go and challenge to win your division because who do they have to beat? They have to beat New England. Mm -hmm. Yes, they want to beat the Jets, but they have to get over the New England hump. And the only way to do that is to get number 12, Tom Brady, down on the ground. I think that they have the personnel now who possibly can go do that. But they got to leapfrog the Jets first. First, because right. Realistic, right. Your goal is New England. They have to leapfrog the Jets. In addition to that, I, I think the Bills will be a factor this year. I mean, Fitzy played hurt last year with the ribs. But like a good baseball team, if, you're, if your injuries are up the middle, Right. Eric Wood right. center was good. Fred Jackson's a good player. The running back Kyle Williams you mentioned him knows that they were hurt right in the heart and they heart weren't very soul. deep. 
Maybe right. they get a break with injuries this year, but right. we'll see. That's cat right. versus cat. That's right. We're going to find we're, we're going to find out a lot about them today. However, in one of the games against the Jets last year, they could have beaten them, the, the Bills, but Stevie Johnson, eh. The end of November, they lost the 28-24. We remember, and Stevie, I mean, they won it, but the celebration with penalties, perfect tee for Coach Ditka because, I mean, you got to remind everybody, Coach, to stop it. Welcome to Stop It. This is that segment where we get the facts and the real facts. Coach Terrell Owens and Chad Johnson are on the market again. Wouldn't you give them just one more chance? Are you kidding? One more chance. How many chances do you have to have? You've destroyed every chance you've ever had. Come on, this is a double. Stop it. Speaking of receivers, 24-hour surveillance, his own driver, what do you make of the Des Bryant rules? Let me tell you something. In life, you get what you tolerate. If you're a player in, a, in the National Football League, you have an obligation and a responsibility to the team, to the fans, to the league. And if you can't do that, stop it. Coach, we know you've got a lot of power, but do you have the pull of Jerry Jones? Do you have people who will clean your glasses for you? Well, I don't know if I have uh, the pull of Jerry Jones, but I know I have people who will clean my car, clean my house, clean my glasses, polish my shoes. Stop it. Well, Mike and Mike are going to clean everyone's glasses on Tuesday between 3 and 3.30 Eastern. It's a... Uh... It's a new show, Best of the NFL. Mike and Mike look back at uh, the weekend before and their own spin on it. So you want to join us for that? We got plenty more to, you know, three-hour show, Tom, by the way. We'll be back. Coming up. F-Wheel X Shave. Two, two, two. One, one, one. Blue 90 hut. Franchise QBs. I thought we had blitz because I got hit so quick. We didn't have blitz. We've got rookies Andrew Luck and RG3 mic'd up in Soundtracks. And it's the segment you hope you aren't a part of. You got a, a superstar quarterback, give him some help. Chris and Key are putting underachievers on notice. We call it Where You At. This September on ESPN America, the temperatures are cooling down, but the action is heating up. The hunt for October is on as the MLB's top teams gear up for the pennant races. Plus, it's that time of year again. It's back to campus as college football returns. And the new NFL season kicks off. Get ready for all the hits, all the catches, and all the glory. The brightest stars, the biggest games, all month long live on ESPN America. Shavers delivery to him. That ball's in the air. Is that numero uno? Yeah! Goodbye, home run! Manny Machado delivers with his first major league dinger. Here's the one-two delivery on the way. And he lifts that one. That's going to the corner. Manny Machado, goodbye, home run! In his second major league ball game, a two-homer game. And ball here high and deep. Way back. Ready, doesn't move. You can put it on the board. Yes. Yes. I walk off his first major league homer for Jordan Jacks. And the Sox win it four to three. Yes. Armas belts one to left field. This one is deep. This one is deep. A first career grand slam for Clint Armas. Hit the pole. You can hear it ring. Pirates lead six to five. Basketball isn't just my favorite sport. It's my passion. And I want to take my game to the next level. That's what it's about. The better I am as a coach, the better they are on and off the court. And as players, they deserve a chance to learn as much as possible from the game. As a parent, that's what's important to me. Basketball is your game. iHoops is your game. Elevate. Elevate at iHoops.com. 
Monday Night Football live on ESPN America. It's back with a doubleheader. First up, the Bengals head for Baltimore, where Flacco and the Ravens will be ready for action. Then we head west, where Rivers and the Chargers will be looking to strike on the road in Oakland. Touchdown, Raiders! Bengals at Ravens, followed by Chargers at Raiders. Coverage starts with Monday Night Countdown tomorrow at 2300 CET. Monday Night Football live on ESPN America, home of the NFL. Welcome back to Sunday NFL Countdown, presented by IBM. Welcome back to Sunday NFL Countdown. I'm Bob Holtzman in Chicago. Andrew Luck may be asked to do more today than any rookie quarterback ever has. Offensive coordinator Bruce Arians told me on every play, he'll give Luck a run option and a pass option. And Arians guesses that about 20% of the time, Luck will change the play to something totally different anyway. Arians is so confident in luck, he told me last night, I kind of hope they blitz us. Now to Ed Werder in New Orleans. Thanks, Bob. Redskins coach Mike Shanahan, who called the plays for John Elway and Steve Young when they won Super Bowls, told me that while he's installed his entire offensive system, he significantly reduced the game plan to emphasize those plays that most appeal to rookie Robert Griffin III. But I'm told that Griffin believes that Shanahan and the other offensive coaches trust his judgment, and they've encouraged him to play the way he always has, passing on the move, running when necessary, understanding when to take a chance, and when to throw the ball into the ground. Linebacker London Fletcher, a 15-year NFL veteran boomer, told me the Redskins have never had a quarterback like RG3. Ed Bob, thank you very much. Well, Washington Post, a headline in August, ready for prime time. Anytime we hear that time, we get excited, by the way. Both Andrew Luck and Robert Griffin III were wired this preseason. Literally, here's soundtracks. What's time? Let's pick it up. Let's gas him now. Let's gas him. Bunch right, 62, F wheel, X shave. 2-2-2, two, two, two. One, one, one. Blue 90 hut! It's always about the quarterback. Now you've got number one, number two. This one has a little special ring to it. Robert Griffin III just being announced, and this is his first home game. Fake Griffin stops, wheels, throws a rainbow down the middle of the field looking for Garcon. Oh, his fingertips incomplete. He's got strong rotation, just missed it. Wow, that was my fault. That ball was wide open. He can bring outside, give him a chance to make one of his spectacular catches. I thought I was going to get it right around his head. There's some window there, you didn't. I did too early, and I, I wasn't ready to throw it, and I lost sight of it. Robert the shotgun takes a snap, looking right, gets hit, drops it off, incomplete, but he took a lick. He took a hit. Took a strong hit that time. Well, it looked like it surprised him, too, which he should be alert for that. I thought we had blitz, because I got hit so quick. We didn't have blitz. One of the linemen tried to hit flat, right? Yeah, one of the linemen tried to cut and missed. So I was waiting on you for the thunder. I got hit, so I just threw it the hot time. He just popped on me. I was like... Second and goal at the four. Robert rolling to his right. Fires. Touchdown. Santana Moss. Bingo. That's going to be tough to stop down the road. Preseason game number three. Very entertaining. The battle between Robert Griffin and Andrew Luck goes the Redskins' way. Hey, Robert. Good job, Good job. Good luck in the world. It's all that good stuff. Thank you. Tell your folks to settle off. You too. Well, our IBM Insight Center, right? watching them, listening to them, we've never had five rookie quarterbacks start week one. Since 1950, we've never had more than three in a season. I mean, it really is amazing. In 69, the biggest name of the three was Roger Staubach, Hall of Fame. 1968, the best of those was Greg Landry, UMass Detroit. The others, not so much. Well, rookie starting right away. Mm -hmm. Is this the right, I mean, five of them, Chris. Is this the right thing to do? It's the right thing to do, Boom. And the reason why, because college coaches that haven't been very, very successful in the National Football League from a head coaching standpoint have done a better job of training these young athletes. The athletes that were getting at quarterback are a lot better. They're more trained. They're used to running 
80 to 85 plays in a college game. You get to the pro game, the, the biggest adjustment has been the speed. Now the game slows down because they only have 60 plays. They get pre-snap reads, and the training that they have, boom, we're starting to see the benefits of that. The kids should play now. The game is totally different. Well, it, it's different. Well, it's exciting, man. I mean, five rookie quarterbacks starting. I mean, it's, this is sky is the limit. Well, rookie quarterbacks, and really, at least for the NFL, rookie refs, uh, as we all saw in the preseason and, of course, on Wednesday night, at least to start the season, replacement officials from the non-major college conferences will be on the field as the regular officials are locked out. And Susie, uh, just this week, for a long time, what, they shed some light on this over there. Well, you know, that crew on Wednesday in that big stage, perhaps the most experienced, but now 13 games have to be covered today. We know the speed of the game completely changes. So what is the latest? Yeah, there's nothing new with negotiations. And the NFL stance is we're not negotiating anything except maybe the money. There's some big issues on the table there. Now everybody's asked, what's the NFL Players Union going to do in support of the Referees Union? And one thing that the NFL Players Association has done is they have sent a letter to the league asking for information on the bios of those officials who are now working as replacements and the process in which they did their background checks. And one other note, Something that's really hung them up, the league, is adamant about having that reserve officiating crew mm -hmm. going forward. They think this neat game and officials needs to be younger because instead of covering a full court game right now, uh, it's a half court game, it's now a full court game. So they really want those younger new officials and there's nothing that suggests that the ice is going to break on them. And the NFL is preparing these officials to be there in the future. They had them in New York on Wednesday night for the opener to watch that game with Carl Johnson, the head of the officials. And there will be a little bit of history made today. Shannon Easton will become the first woman to officiate an NFL regular season game today. Lions Rams, Shannon Easton is working it. You know, I talked to one veteran official last night who said what seems frustrating is that they feel that they're asking so little in the grand scheme of things. Boom, it's unfortunate that this has to be a headline as we kick off 2012. Well, Suze, they came into the league in 2002. I'm talking about the Houston Texans. In their 10th season, the Texans earned their first playoff berth by winning the AFC South at 10-6. and six. And Then with third-string quarterback T.J. Yates, they won in the postseason at home against Cincy before playing a very tough and impressive divisional playoff game on the road before they bowed out at Baltimore. They stayed the course with Gary Kubiak, a coach, almost a mini Tom Coughlin-type story. Stayed with him. It worked. This season, they're picked for the Super Bowl by many. Matt Stump, the Schaub, is healthy at quarterback. Andre Johnson is ready to go at wideout, as is Arian Foster, you heard at running back. Their defense is young, they're hungry, and they don't seem too concerned over parting ways with stalwarts Mario Williams and D'Amico Ryans. Funny, in week one of 2003, which was Houston's second year, Houston, you might remember, was a huge underdog on opening day at Miami, and half the world had the Dolphins in their survivor pool. Texans pulled the upset that day. Now the shoe is on the other foot. Miami at 6-10 and 10 last season is a huge underdog at Houston. Uh, of course, Joe Philbin, the new coach in Miami, uh, last year offensive coordinator at Green Bay, one of four brand-new coaches uh, in the National Football League. Uh, a lot of off-season changes. Even uh, the man that uh, spins for a living, DJ Porter, uh, decided to weigh in on it. Is that time? It's time. Is that time again to get this show on the road? Let's go. Get the Super Bowl. The offseason is all about the concussions. My decision. This preseason is all about motivation, determination. I'm excited. I'm excited. So excited. We're excited. Very excited. Real excited. Yes. Competing for positions. Competing for jobs. The bounty allegations. Don't worry about things you can't control. Is all about winning and owning your role. It's time, it's time, it's that time again. To get this show on the road, Let's go. get the Super Bowl. The policy is all about situations. Tough decisions this preseason. It's all about transition expectations. With the second pick, Robert Griffin. With the first pick, Andrew Luck. I'm thrilled to be here. I'd love to play here. The evidence is clear. Respect 
Seriously. Take your own ride. One game at a time. We're getting better. Yeah. We're better. What up? The game's a great. But the friendship check is special. Try to set a good example. You gotta be professional. It's time. It's time. It's that time again. So get this show on the road. Let's go. Get the Super Bowl. The off season. It's all about interpretation and conclusion. This preseason. It's all about motivation. Determination. We had to rotate the quarterbacks. This is to stop training camp. It's serious business. Watch us beat the Jets. Offensively, I'm rusty, but defensively, we're ready. This process, process, process has not been easy for me. I'm excited. I'm excited. So excited. We're excited. Very excited. Real excited. Yes. We don't. We can spin that. that dish. Really? What? Really? Don't say much. What? That he said, "Stop it." He <laughs> said, "Stop it." Totally it. To the Super Bowl. <laughs> Coming up, his mistakes were large. It was one of those things where it was like, damn, we're really leaving right now. No more, no more games, no more, you know, no Super Bowl. But what one seven-year-old fan of Kyle Williams did may have been even bigger. I was really sad, and then my dad said, if you feel bad, how do you think Kyle feels? Plus, what do you get when you pair Chris Carter with Keyshawn Johnson? Holla! We call it Where You At. IBM Insight Center is presented by IBM. Let's build a smarter planet. Visit IBM.com slash smarter planet. Thursday Night Football live on ESPN America. The oldest rivalry in football comes to Lambeau. Can Cutler guide the Bears to a historic win on the road? Or will Rodgers and the Pack outsmart their bitter rivals in this early season showdown? Bears and Packers, Thursday at 0200 CET, live on ESPN America. It's our team, our time. No regrets. That's a motto for the 2012 Bulldogs. Even though it's only six words long, it means a lot more to the team preseason rank number six. We came up with it. That, that wasn't the coach, um, you know, decide thing. We said it, it's, it's our team. We want to take control of it. And it's our time if we, we have this specific group of guys that for a unique experience. This year is very lined up very well for us to do something special. We're trying to, the team is trying to make it a player driven team. We're trying to do everything we need to do. We're the ones that's planning the game. We're the ones that, that's making plays. We're the ones that are going to be credited for the win. And the coach has got our back. So there's no regrets as long as we leave everything out on the field. Whatever happens, it just happens. No holding back. It's, it's, the last, it's the last time for the seniors and a lot of time for a lot of people. You know, a lot of people ain't going to be able to play on this level. So I think that, that means just, you know, no, no holding back and just go all out, like, get what you got while you're on the field. We want no regrets at the end of the season. We don't want to look back and say, man, I wish I would have worked harder in practice. Man, I wish I would have shown up to summer workouts. Um, we want no regrets. We want to go in and, and work our tails off and go out there and compete and have fun. On a changeup, Chipper Jones with a base hit to left. That's going to score two, and this is a 9-6. Make it 9-7 game. Horn hits that ball well to right. Michael Morse going back, and the Braves have one off the board. This is going to score two, and Bourne checks in at third. Safe at the plate. Unbelievable. He catches a fastball. Hits it a long way to left center. And this game is tied. Why not? Danny Espinosa. And this one's trouble. Desmond got a piece of it. And the Braves lead 11 to 10. ESPN Player is your online source for March Madness. He got it. You, for knocking down. you can catch all the action from the men's 2012 NCAA tournament. Every round, including the Final Four in the National Championship game. Plus, you can pause and rewind the action so you never miss a play from the big dance. They're going dancing. It's all live and all from 999. Get into the madness with College Pass on ESPN Player. Sign up now. Hey, you know what? This is um, this is what our pictures are coming in like on Twitter. That's sending from the 
homes around the country and at the stadiums and getting ready for the games. This is really fun. I just I remember those days at the parking lot at Chase Stadium. Well, no, I didn't come into my Twitter. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't you worry about that. But this is, we like it. Everybody getting ready for the games. And speaking of young man, Keith, it's getting ready for a game. Well, uh, you had a visit with one young man from the 49ers. Thanks, Boom. Some players can't wait to get back on the football field after a devastating loss. I went out to Arizona to talk to Kyle Williams to talk about that New York Giants loss in the championship game. I had a similar experience in 1998 against the Denver Broncos. These memories never leave. Dear Mr. Williams, we just watched the playoff game. I feel really bad for you, but I wanted to tell you that you are a great season. You should be very proud, so I wanted to say thank you. I am your number one fan. You are awesome. Sometimes, a kid offers perspective that adults can't see. For San Francisco wide receiver Kyle Williams, a new point of view came from seven-year-old Owen Shore, who wrote a letter in response to Williams' play in the NFC title game. 14 to 10, Niners on top. Here comes a punt. Kyle Williams back at the 35. It was bouncing on the ground and uh, took a funny hop, came at me, and instincts told me, get the hell out of the way, you know. And at first, I didn't think I touched it. I didn't feel like it hit my knee at all. So, you know, I'm going back and telling teammates, like, if we're good, we're fine. It didn't touch me. There's no way it touched me. I had actually talked to a referee. He said, nah, that didn't touch you. I saw it. I was looking right at it. Well, that ball grazes his knee. And if they throw the flag, they're going to get it because the ball actually hit his knee. Obviously, looking back at it, grazed my knee. The turnover led to a Giants touchdown to take the lead. The 49ers tied the game and forced overtime. Williams set to return another punt. Caught it cleanly, saw a crease, tried to explode through that crease, and there was a hole there. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, he got his hand on it. Lost the ball, and the Giants say they have it, they do! Williams coughed it up on the return, and the Giants have recovered it. That turnover set up the Giants' game-winning field goal and sent New York to the Super Bowl. It was one of those things where it was like, damn, we're really leaving right now. No more games, you know, no Super Bowl. It's one of the emptiest feelings that you could feel because it's something that we deserved, and it's hard to not feel directly responsible for something like that. You hate to be, you know, the last guy that had the ball and uh, to give it up that way in that fashion and to lose with, uh, you know, a game of this magnitude. The number one thing I told myself is I'm not about to run from this. I'm not about to shy away from this. It wasn't any situation where I felt out of place. And I think throughout the game, you know, I showed that. And it's just one of those things, man, football happened. Despite his taking accountability, fans unleashed their venom on Twitter. Kyle Williams, 10, I hope you, your wife, your kids, your family die. You deserve it. That right there, yeah. Or you should jump off the Golden Gate Bridge for that one. Hope you run into a bullet the way you ran into that ball. I mean, yeah. to me, I'm going to laugh at that. There was a bunch of them that I did laugh at. Yeah. People can say what they want about me. I'll take it. I know that's part of the territory. I knew it was coming. People are going to act stupid, and, and I was prepared for that. What he wasn't prepared for was the impact one young fan could make. I was really sad, and then my dad said, if you, if you feel bad, how do you think Kyle feels? And then my dad said, do you want to write him a letter? And I said, sure. Dear Mr. Williams, we just watched the playoff game. I feel really bad for you. But I wanted to tell you that you had a great season. You should be very proud, so I wanted to say thank you. I am your number one fan, Owen Shore. You're awesome. The fact that he can look at it and he can look at the bigger picture at seven years old, it's one of those things that you, you kind of, it takes you back down to earth a little bit and says, you know what, you're going to be fine. This is one of those things that's going to pass over. And if a seven-year-old can realize that, then you damn sure can at 23. I couldn't sit around and just let it eat away at me and then sit there and think about it and think about it. This is going to break you or you're going to move forward through it and you're going to be stronger after it. I can't wait for week one at Lambeau. I just can't wait to get back in any type of setting, put those pads back on and ball.
you know what, fans can be a little harsh and crazy at times. Having a conversation with this young man really made you sit around and think. Boom, you know, as well as everybody up here walking through airports sometimes, you get it an earful. But what he had to go through mm -hmm. after that, mm -hmm. just amazing. But guess what? He's going to bounce back, and I really believe that. You can see it. Great job, Key, and that young yeah. boy at seven hmm. put his name to it. Yes. The other idiots don't. Yeah, that would be a difference. Right, right. How do you come over that? Well, you over what he had? Boom, boom, you don't unless you can get back to that same spot and move forward. And I think that's why you heard Kyle say, mm -hmm. I can't wait to get back on the field and have another chance to do it. You know, I, I lost the Super Bowl twice. And I can tell you that that's the only thing I can really compare to it. It haunts me all the time, every year. It's never going to go, go away until the day I die. Well, Kyle and the Niners have a chance to do something about that, at least, you know, get going again, return of punts. I mean, they're at Green Bay today for the late kickoff this afternoon. Let's go back now to Colleen Dominguez. Colleen? Boomer, we're about to find out pretty quickly here if Kyle Williams has gotten over those two fumbles in the NFC title game as he will be playing today for an injured Tankin Jr. I can tell you that at his locker after that loss in the championship game, he did not make any excuses. He acknowledged his part in the 49ers loss. You fast forward to the preseason. He handled all seven of the punts he fielded. Williams has an aggressive style of play. He tends to sprint under punts, and that's something the 49ers don't want him to change, even though it does offer high risk, high reward for special teams. Boomer. Colleen, thank you, and we'll see what happens. We know where Colleen is at at Lambeau. Chris and Key, where are you at? Boom. Man, sometimes guys disappear. Their parents can't find them. The high school coach can't find them. Their baby mama can't even find but them. But the bank can find them. The bank can always find them. Hijack. So we, so we create a, a, a little segment here called Where You At. When a guy disappear, we got to put him on there. Yes, sir. First candidate. Uh, let's go with Carson Palmer. Oakland Raiders. I'll oh, take the first. Let's go with Mercedes Lewis. 2010. It's the first time working out the Kings, Tommy. 2010, 58 catches, played 16 games, 10 touchdowns. Last year, Tommy, 39 catches, zero touches, played in 15 games. Mercedes Lewis, UCLA, where you at? Oh, cross town rival. Now we gonna go with Carson Palmer. Hefty price tag. Hugh Jackson back in Cincinnati where you left him because he paid a first and a second round to get you. You know, look at them statistics, CC. 16 INTs now. A lot of them came in a couple games, 13 touchdowns. New head coach, new system, new general manager. It's time to really get it done. But I want to know, where you at, Carson? Hey, it might be a lot of guys from USC in that where you at. Well, old state guys ain't all that great either now. <laughs> all right, boom, we know where you at. Hey, I'm, I'm at right here. And uh, on to the night game, fellas. We look forward to that all year. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Denver Broncos. There's one member of the Steelers who is not at Denver, and for very good reason. For that story, we go back to Justina Anderson in Denver. Justina. Yes, you know, this will be the third straight game that Steelers safety Ryan Clark will miss in Denver as a result of the sickle cell trait. So I asked him, what will be the impact of your absence, given that you led the team in tackles last season? And Ryan Clark said it's actually the chemistry that you lose, given that he, Ike Taylor, and Troy Palomalo started seven seasons together. Now, as for James Harrison, the Steelers linebacker declared himself a game-time decision with the knee, but I've talked to two sources who have talked to James, and both of them say that James told them that he will not play but we will still update you on the official word with that because it is James so look for linebacker Chris Carter to start in the spot given that he has done so throughout the preseason boom all right Justin it looks like a nice day actually going to be warm out there in Denver today that might be one of the warmest sights that we got uh, even though it's an evening game at mile high well let's start with that game our Bank of America game picks here we go we'll total them up at the end of the season see how we do Broncos at the Steelers well, um, duh. But yeah, <laughs> duh. I, I think that Peyton Manning, the four time MVP, returns defense running game Broncos. The Steelers, old defense without Ryan Clark. Him not being there at the safe position, it really hurts them in this game. Going with the Broncos. I'm going to go with the Steelers. I think Todd Haley will do something special for Ben Roethlisberger. He I don't care Todd what. Haley. I have you. <laughs> I don't Todd care Haley. what. Tommy's talking about because he's a homer. <laughs> and then CC follows him anyway. I'm going right. to steal him. Okay. <laughs> Steelers defense will prevail on it. Okay. <laughs> Restaurant. 
You know, oh, Lordy. Peyton Manning has been waiting a long time for this game. Mm -hmm. This is great to mm -hmm. see it. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm you won't. Broncos at home with Peyton Manning. <laughs> Bills at the Jets. Boom, duh. I'll get to that. You won't. Tom? Which game? Bills at Jets. I'm taking the Buffalo Bills. Uh, boy. I think that the improved defense, it, it, they might not need any defense. Jets haven't scored. <laughs> Buffalo Bills. I need to see that Wildcat. He must be a bad cat. I'm just saying. Because <laughs> uh, that offense, I'm going with the Bills. Too many problems offensively for the Jets. I mm -hmm. don't the Bills. Mm -hmm. Too many problems. Whoa. Well, I think I went with the Bills, because, I mean, the Jets, because I just think they're a better football team than they played. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to see that pass rush. Yeah, and I think with healthy Bills, they get off to a good start. They need to leapfrog the Jets. They do it. Buffalo circling one wagon at a time. Niners <laughs> at Packers. Well, the Green Bay Packers had the best player in the league in Aaron Rodgers, and the defense will be improved. Packers. It's a tough place to play the first week. I believe the 49ers are a better team, but the Packers win this game. I think the, the Packers have to get off to a fast start. The 49ers, great defense, but I just overall, I think, like CeCe said, at home, it's going to be a tough place to play. Well, I'm not even sure who I pick, but I'm going to pick the 49ers. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we love you. Coach, you man. pick the 49ers. We love you. <laughs> Niners bring that defense every week. I, let's see how they play the fast-moving Packer offense. I, it's a great game. And, uh, Niners. <clears throat> Niners. Jaws, you guys, breakout performers, what you got? Where you at? Uh, Boomer, I got Kevin Smith running back for the Detroit Lions. No job at best. No Mikel LaShore. And you know when you play the Lions, you worry about their passing game. Smith will run into a very friendly box in today's matchup. Big breakout game for Kevin Smith. Josh, I'm going to take Blaine Gabbert. New haircut and new quarterback look. Looked confident, looked amazing in preseason. Maybe one of the most improved players in preseason. I think he has a significantly different year this year than he had last year. I'm glad you took a factor back too, baby. And with Oakland's top wide receivers nursing injuries, it's rookie Rod Streeter. During training camp, Carson Palmer told me Streeter was the best undrafted free agent he had seen as an entire 10-year career and he tore it up in the preseason. Boom, back to you. And Susie, they're not dressing a lot of wides. They may not. They're hurt at that position. That's a good one to look at tomorrow night in that game. Oakland at home against San Diego. Super Bowl picks. Who are we looking at in New Orleans in February? We'll be back. We'll tell you who's at. Breakout performers are brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Located on the web at MBUSA.com. This September on ESPN America, the temperatures are cooling down, but the action is heating up. The hunt for October is on as the MLB's top teams gear up for the pennant races. Plus, it's that time of year again. It's back to campus as college football returns. And the new NFL season kicks off. Get ready for all the hits, all the catches, and all the glory. The brightest stars, the biggest games, all month long live on ESPN America. Number 10, LSU versus Alabama. Mays is uh, in the quarterback and takes a snap. Now he drops back and wants to throw and throws it towards the end zone. Has a man wide open and he has got it. At the uh, one yard, oh, it's picked off. It is picked off. It was intended for Williams, but Reed came up with a football at the goal line. LSU versus Alabama, game of the century. Eric Reed makes the play of the game of the century. Alabama driving and they try a trick play. And Marquise Mays fakes a handoff, and he's got a tight end wide open running down the sidelines. And when I'm watching the play live, I'm thinking, that's it. This is a touchdown, and it's ball game. Alabama's going to find a way to win this game at home. They're going to be the number one ranked team and go undefeated. This has been a great back and forth contest. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, comes safety Eric Reed into the screen. And I'm thinking, OK, he's going to jump up. He may have a chance to bat this ball down. He may try to make a tackle once this tight end's made the catch. Instead, he goes up, and he actually fights the tight end for the football, high points it over top of the tight end, and somehow has the strength to wrestle the football out of his hands, gets down right at the one-yard line. Game-saving play by Eric Reed. Remarkable defensive effort, and I think that's the play. If LSU points back, the reason why they won that game is because Eric Reed made that remarkable interception. What a play by Brandon Inns. 
giving Chase Granderson on the run. He makes the play. Oh, what a play by Granderson. A diving stop by Johnson. Throw to Oh, wow. Got him, and what a play by Elliott Johnson. Uh -oh. Diving and making a spectacular catch. Baseball tells the story of incredible plays. April 12, 2009, Reed Johnson robs Prince Fielder of a grand slam. There's a high drive, deep right field, back is Johnson, he makes a spectacular catch! Be there for the moments you won't forget. MLB, live on ESPN America. Sunday NFL Countdown is presented by IBM. Let's build a smarter planet. Visit IBM.com slash smarter planet and in part by Mercedes Benz. Experience truly great engineering today at your authorized dealer and Taco Bell. Sometimes you got to live moss. Well, we're back. Talk about a rose among thorns. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're, this is the, we can feel the whole team. So let's feel the Super Bowl team. Myrtle, boom. Ravens, Niners with the Niners winning. Packers over the Ravens. Games in New Orleans. Saints are there, but Houston takes it. Mm -hmm. Packers over Texans. Texans over 49ers. 49ers over Patriots. <laughs> 49ers over the Texans. Miami Heat over the Lake. No. Oh. Oh. 49ers oh, which, over the Pace. Oh, where are you at? <laughs> 49ers over the Texans. Philly over the Ravens. Stop. That was fast. Did everybody get all that down? Really? <laughs> we got football. Enjoy the game. Enjoy the season. So how we do it, Keith. Take us this out. This is how it is. Get it hot, baby. Watch it so Woo! Oh, Sunday God. countdown. First week. Have a great Whoa. season. Boom. Everybody. Travel safe, dog. Yeah. Don't kick it. You'll hurt yourself. Boom. <laughs> all right. Picture. Hey, quick deep photo. Deep photo. ESPN America. Your home for live NFL.